Welcome to the Connor's Corner segment of Ask the Lawyer. A few months ago on our show, we were talking to director Ron Maxwell, and our conversation drifted on, in today's movie industry, there are very few films that deal with serious issues. And he lamented that fact. And and I remember one, he did the movie Gettysburg, which starred Martin Sheen as General Robert E. Lee. Now, we have another film that stars Martin Sheen, which deals with a very serious issue, the death of a child, or in this case, the death of children. And I have the two filmmakers responsible for it, Julio and Marlo Quintana. How are you doing today, guys? Great. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Now, The Vessel, it's an unusual movie, very powerful, very moving. Tell the audience what it's about, because I think you can describe it better than I can. Sure. It's about, it's about a little village um, that suffered a, a very terrible tragedy many years ago. And a, a, a priest who's played by Martin Sheen is trying to let them, you know, move, you know, help them move on, uh, help them, you know, have more children and, you know, and be happy. And, and there's, they seem to be sort of stuck in this state of mourning until this young man one day, um, he, he has a near-death experience. Um, and, and for some reason starts building this strange structure out of the remains of this old elementary school. And in that process, it sort of becomes this, um, you know, this, this new growth and this new rebirth for, for this village that, that had this terrible loss. Now, I mean, here you're talking about a, a devastating impact on a town. You're talking a relatively small town that lost 40 some odd children. Yes, that's correct. A, a, a tidal wave basically came and wiped away its only elementary school with all of the children inside. So people have lost their faith, they've lost their direction, the town seems like it's depressed, there, there doesn't seem to be any kind of economy going on. I think the goal was to try to to try to try start a story where, with the uh, people at a, at a low point, low point emotionally and a low point in their relationships and also a low point in their faith um, and, and their, their spiritual uh, situation. So, so that way we could see if... Uh, if something I could introduce something dramatic into that into that world that short, sort of shake them out of it. You're both young. Why would you guys be attracted to this film, which is kind of depressing, certainly in the beginning? You know, it's faith based, even though there are no clear answers. But the old story, the old line, you know, why do bad things happen to good people? Well, I, I think it sort of stems from an experience that I had uh, studying doing religious studies in college, which is basically a, a, like a secular comparative religion degree at the University of Texas. And I think I I became a little disillusioned by the, that whole process of, of trying to delve into history to prove uh, what was true or untrue. Or um, I, I think that you know at the at at 19 years old, 20 years old, that was that was a confusing process that sort of um, forced me to have to take a step back and, and say, okay, if using these intellectual means, these academic means, I can't prove something one way or another how do i how do i not be paralyzed by that how do i move on and, and still see the beauty and joy and and uh spirituality that that's all around me and and so for me um the movie was sort of a metaphorical uh way to to tell my own spiritual journey and intellectual journey when i was younger um but but externalize it in a way that could actually make a compelling story. So, uh, so thematically, basically, uh, the movie is just really a representation of my own spiritual journey, and, and I guess sort of an, an ongoing, lifelong spiritual journey that we're all on. Julio, besides the main lead, which is Martin Sheen, who's the other lead in the film, male lead? Uh, that's my, my younger brother, Lucas. Uh, I wrote the movie for him. I have been working with him since, you know, we were, he was a kid. I guess I was a kid, too. And, uh, I made a lot of short films for him, and I just I knew that I always wanted him to be the lead of my first feature. So I really I wrote the movie around him, and uh, and then Martin was really the the supporting character that I wrote afterwards, and and they sort of became dual protagonists in the story. Where where did you film it? Because it's not clear what country the the tsunami hit. Yeah, and that was that was an intentional decision from Julio to kind of leave it, you know, where you don't know where it takes place or in what period, you know, time period it takes place to make it sort of feel more like a parable um, and sort of like a more universal story. But we actually filmed it <clears throat> in this little, um, this little uh, village outside the walls of old San Juan, Puerto Rico uh, called La Perla. Um, and that's where we filmed, we filmed 90, 90 
nine percent of the film there. So, how, what was it like filming in Puerto Rico? It was wonderful. I mean, we, it, you know, it's great because you know, for for filmmakers, because it's you know, it's basically a, a a commonwealth of the United States, and so everything everything works the same as as it does in the states. You know, you you have your dollars. You know, many of the crew people speak English. There's a very very talented crew base there. Um, that we, you know, took advantage of. Um, and it was, it was a wonderful experience for us. I mean, the, the people in the community of La Perla completely embraced the project and we were, you know, renting their houses as, as locations, as, you know, their garages for our art warehouses. We were hiring them as extras. It just became this really beautiful sort of community project. Now, obviously, it's an independent film. How did you guys go around getting your financing and putting the the whole project together? That is always such a difficult part of the whole process is the financing. Um, but uh, we thankfully uh, were able to to get Martin Sheen on board first, um, just because he, you know, we we had Terrence Malick as an executive producer. Um, Terry sent the script to his old friend Martin, who, you know, they worked together on one of Terry's first movies, Badlands. And, um, and Martin immediately responded to the script and, and, and decided to be, you know, to come on board. But it still, you know, it still took us a while after that to raise all the financing from private equity. I mean, we had another big actress come on board, but we couldn't, we couldn't secure the, the last financing in time. And so she dropped out by the time we were ready and we had to secure other financing. So, it's it's always a struggle. It's always you know climbing this mountain, um, but it was all it was all private <clears throat> private investors after you know based on based on our talent. Because you know I would think it'd be very difficult. You got no car crashes. You got no yeah. major <laughs> fires, explosions. You know it's just about relationships yeah. and people. Yeah, in some in some ways it's actually it's easier to it's easier to raise twenty million dollars for. Uh, an indie horror film than it is to raise a million dollars for a spiritual character drama like we made. So, so yeah, you're right. It's a, it's a tough, it's a tough movie to write. It's a tough movie to get financing for. It's a tough movie to distribute. Um, And uh, we've been very encouraged because everywhere we go, whenever we show the movie to groups, unanimously people say we need more films like this. Why, why aren't more movies made like this? But the truth is it's just because it's a spiritual films are actually uh, sometimes difficult to categorize and 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 just hard to get made, really. And especially this type of spiritual film, which is, you know, it's not the typical spiritual film you see. It doesn't have the sort of, you know, hard politics behind it. The message is much more subtle, um, and it's it's got this sort of, I mean, you know, artistic quality to it, you know, and cinematic quality to it. So it is it is a you know, we, you know, when we were trying to sell the film, you know, they told us that the movie in some ways is it's too it has too much faith for the art house market and it's too artsy for the faith house market. And so we were kind of stuck in this weird middle ground uh, for a while until we secured our distributor. Um, and since then, it, you know, we have realized there is a market for this kind of film, but it is it's hard to prove it in early stages. Now, where can members of our audience, where can they see the film? Well, it's about to come out on home entertainment, so it'll be out on on DVD, Blu-ray, iTunes, Amazon, Hulu, all the digital platforms on January 24th. Um, so you know they'd be they'll be able to watch it. It's no longer playing in theaters, but um, they can definitely still watch the film. Okay, so the name of the film is The Vessel. So when they're looking for it, I guess you can type in The Vessel Martin Sheen, and you'll find it pretty quickly. Yeah, I think I think so, and and, uh, and I think with just between iTunes and Amazon, that's It'll pop up right away. What was it like working with Martin Sheen? Here's a guy who's been in business forever, and you guys are first-time movie makers. Yeah, and let me just clarify one thing, though. Uh, There is another movie called The Vessel. It's a pro-abortion documentary that actually came out uh, two years before ours, and (laughs) um, that's definitely not our movie. Uh, So um, so if that's what pops up, then just take another look. (laughs) <laughs> All right. Well, that's what I was saying. Martin Sheen, at least, right? Because, yeah, the vessel is kind of yeah, a generic yeah, title. Yeah. Yeah. Martin is not in the documentary. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Working with Martin was amazing for us. I, I really like I, I was really nervous the first when we first started with him because I had never directed anybody of that caliber, obviously. But, you know, Martin is just he's just so down to earth. And it's like having, a you know, your grandpa on set. And so he, you know, he just 
he just walk on set and just start making jokes or, you know, complimenting the lighting or, you know, he'd tell my brother, kid, if I had a face like yours, I could have been a star, you know? And, and I think that he just, he made us feel like we were doing something important. And so everybody on set just sort of, uh, he validated everything that we were doing and, and, and he's just, he's sort of been, for me, especially, uh, he's been a rock that, that I could always call him up and, and get encouragement any anytime it seemed like things were just happening slower than I would like. So I, I feel, I feel really blessed to have had Martin involved. What's going to be your next project? Any ideas? Well, I don't know. I, we're, we're still trying to figure that out. Like we, we're trying to, trying to wrap up, uh, everything on the vessel here. And I, and I think we're, we're interested in scripted television also because it seems like more and more, um, the more uh, serious discourse is, is moving over to uh, over to television, and so we'll, we'll see. We're still trying. We're still trying to figure that out. Now I have a question for you. Some of the audience wouldn't think of, but is is the film in English or Spanish? Uh, the film is actually it's actually available in both languages. We filmed the movie twice. Once um, we hired all of our actors uh, were bilingual. We had Martin speak, you know, both English and Spanish, and we did all of our takes in both languages. And so we basically created two completely distinct versions of the film, one in English and one in Spanish with English subtitles. So um so audiences will have the the choice to watch it in either language. And actually if you and so if you buy the D V D or the Blu ray, it actually comes with two separate discs with both versions of the film. So it's kinda of, it's kind of a unique thing. We really did it because we just wanted to be able to reach uh we thought the Latin we thought Spanish would feel more authentic for all the Latin American uh countries, especially since it was shot in Puerto Rico, but, but we really didn't want uh, Americans to have to read subtitles. So I think kind of interesting about uh, the subtle differences that, that are perceived through language. So, um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's something special about this film. Thank you for doing a serious film. A lot of us really do appreciate it because it's very important. You know, some of us just get tired of the series and, you know, comic books and things like that. Not that there's anything seriously wrong with it, but some of us just like something different, something you can think about, something where you don't know the answers to at the end. And you guys accomplished that in the vessel. So good luck to you. And, you know, when your next project comes around, please let us know. Maybe we can talk about it again with our audience. Well, th- thanks so much, and 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 really, it's it's, it's people like you and and your audience that it, the more they they go out and see these films and download these films, like that that's the only way that they can really get made and survive in the future. So, thank you for raising awareness about this. Okay, Julio Marlo Quintana, thank you for making the vessel with Martin Sheen on available Blu-ray Amazon right now. Correct? That's right. On the twenty-fourth. Okay. Thank you so much. Take care.